Hello, hello. I'm sorry. There was an um, internet download, and actually, we already corrected. So I'm sorry, and I, we will continue the way we were working, right? So no thank you for your patience, and we are going to go to the platform, right? Just to make sure. Eh, solo para asegurarme, eh, quisiera saber si lograron, si logramos escuchar la parte que les hablaba del presente simple. Si logramos llegar hasta el final de las signal words. No, teacher. No. 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 Vaya. Ok, entonces vamos a retomar esta slide que creo que fue ahí donde se notió el, el bajón de la, de la, del internet. Yes. Okay. What I was saying with this is that uh, we have to use the simple present tense in order to talk about habits or regular actions or situations that we do every day. For example, I wash my hair every day. Uh, so it's something that I do, that I say, I brush my teeth, I comb my hair. Uh, so that's something that we do every day. So that's an habit. The second thing is facts. Facts or permanent situations. For example, I have one brother, he lives in Paris. So it means that the situation of having one brother is something that is very permanent. It's a permanent situation for me. And for my brother, live, live, that my brother lives in Paris is also a very permanent situation. So uh, the next one says, uh, water boils at 100 degrees. In this case, that's a fact, right? It's a, it's a scientific fact. Then we have uh, the stative verbs. The stative verbs are the ones that we use to talk about, for example, senses. Here, escuchar, see, ver, smell, oler, look, mirar, sim, ver, sound, sonar. Also opinion, right? For example, I say, I believe. Creo, ¿verdad? I consider, considero, like, I like, me gusta. Eh, love, amar, hate, odiar, prefer, preferir, think, pensar, etc. We also talk about a um, simple present with some possession verbs like have, own, belong, and also verbs like agree, estar de acuerdo, be, ser o estar, depend, depender, need, necesitar. Mean, significar, remember, recordar, realize, realizar o darse cuenta, ¿verdad? Recognize, reconocer, seem, parecer, want, etc. So that's why uh, we need to identify that we are talking about simple present tense when we have some signal words like always, never, often, sometimes, every day, once a month, etc. And also you will recognize that always, never, often, and sometimes they are called also frequency adverbs, right? Frequency adverbs. Okay, that's it. Uh, so we finish uh, this part. Uh, I'm, I'm going to share with you my next screen. That is the platform, right? So to show you. I would like that you can confirm if you can watch my screen. Me gustaría que me confirmen si lo pueden ver. Yes, yes. Okay. yes. okay, okay, yes. perfect. Yes. In the yes. Yes. excellent. In the platform, you have this uh, video that is about three people. So these three people are being asked, uh, "What's your schedule like?" For example, it's a conversation between Mike and Brittany between Mike and Joshua, and between Mike and Maya. And basically, uh, they are responding what their schedules like. Como son sus um, rutinas, verdad? Y esta palabra, you have to pay attention in the pronunciation. Schedule, schedule. It's like a K, like here, schedule, right? So, uh, what they use are some of the words that I already presented to you, for example, um the the simple present right my classes start at 8 a.m 8 a.m so i get up at 7 and take the bus to school when do your classes end they end at noon then i have a job at the library so when do you study my own my only time to study is and then it continues 
So what I want you to do is to go to the platform to watch this video and look for every conversation. So uh, you have to look how they explain their daily schedule using the simple present tense and the connective words that I explained before, right? Uh, and the knowledge check of this section, for example, when we talk about my, uh, when we talk about Brittany's schedule, uh, you have to uh, write the order of the actions. For example, Brittany, according to what you read on the conversation, Brittany first, she gets up, right? Then she takes the bus. Later, she goes to class. Then she works. And finally, she studies. So if you see here, since we are talking about the third person, in this case, Brittany Davis, uh, we use the simple present third person rule. In this case, we add the ES, for example, to go, and it says she goes. Here we add the S and we say she takes. Here we add the S and we say she works. Here we, add, we change the Y, we add I, E, S, she studies. And the last one, that is the number one in, in the order, he gets up, right? We add the S to the verb, according to the rule that I already explained. And the same happens with Joshua, right? So Joshua, if you see the steps, for first, he goes for a, uh, first he gets up, then he goes for a run, then um, he has breakfast. Later, um, he starts work and then he eats dinner. If you see, since we are, work, we are talking about Yeshua, we use the third person singular rule. He has, he starts, he eats, he gets up, he goes. Right, so you need to be careful. And the same, the same happened with Maya Black. When we talk about the routine or the schedule of Maya Black, we have to look that we write the right um, the logic steps or or the numbers that are according to the routine. For example, number one, uh, she goes home. Right, number two, she finishes work. Number three, she has dinner. Number four. Um, right, no, yes, yes, first she goes work, then uh, she finishes work, right? And number three, she has dinner. And number four, she goes home. And number five, she goes to bed, right? So you have to look for the order according to the, to the um, schedule. And then you have to pay attention to the, the way the verbs are written. She finishes, she goes, right? <laughs> and so on so we have here in the chat um, okay okay perfect okay that's it that's the exercise perdón Es que no. la interferencia que se escucha es porque Daisy tiene abierto el micrófono. Ah, hola Daisy, ¿será que nos ayuda un ratito poniéndole en mute? De hecho ya los iba a poner en mute a todos, ahí está, gracias. Ok, perfect. Uh, so, I'm going to continue with this part, uh, which is, thank you Daisy, thank you very much. Ok, thanks. Perdón, perdón. No, don't worry, thank you. Ok, let's continue. Um, okay, now we are going to start with the section number two. So we finished section number one until here. Hasta aquí terminamos ya la sección número uno, ¿verdad? Si ustedes se fijan. Eh, vamos a comenzar lo que sería la sección número dos. Eh, voy a explicar esta parte en, en español para que nos quede así como bien clarito, ¿verdad? For next week, we are free. We don't have class. It's vacation, right? Uh, but uh, we are going to continue on Monday, August the 10th, right? That day we are going to start again and we are going to continue all the section number two, right? We are going to finish section number two and we are going to finish section number three until the midterm exam, right? Uh, since this is the first week we are like getting adapted, like starting and it has been like slow, but next week, once we come from vacation, we are going to be a little bit fast. 
and uh, you will have the chance during vacation to advance as much as you can in the platform, right? Eh, como vamos a tener vacación, ¿verdad? Eh, ustedes pueden avanzar todo lo que deseen en la plataforma, ¿verdad? No hay ningún problema. Aunque vamos a estar en vacación, yo voy a estar disponible para ayudarles a resolver los ejercicios si usted quiere avanzar mucho más de la sección 2, incluso la 3, eh, hasta donde usted quiera llegar. Eh, en términos de avance, para, la, para esta semana ¿verdad? vamos a dejar iniciada la sección 2, pero al regresar de vacación vamos a concluir la sección 2 y vamos a iniciar lo que es la sección 3 y vamos a finalizar hasta el midterm exam, right? Eh, after section 3 we have a midterm exam and then in the, four, in the third week we are going to conclude the section number 4 and in the week 5 we are going to conclude the section number 5 and that's it. Okay, so. Uh, for the 2.00 lesson objective, it says that by the end of this class, you will learn vocabulary for talking about places in houses and apartments. So that's uh, the part two. And then uh, in the platform, you have this vocabulary and house apartment. So I invite you to go to watch this video to repeat the names of the parts of the house, to pronounce them the way they do, right? In order to improve your pronunciation and to listen many times until you can understand all that it says and until you can pronounce each word the same way they do, right? Uh, we are going to cover also the 2.2 lesson objective that says that by the end of this class, you will be able to respond um, yes, no questions in the simple present, and you will practice a conversation about an apartment, which illustrates how this topic is used in real life situations. Uh, so uh, we have the simple present short answers, right? In here, uh, you live in an apartment. Uh, do you live in an apartment? Does Chris live in an apartment? So in this case, you will see that uh, they are, the only possible answers they have are yes or no, right? Yes, I do, no, I don't. Uh, so uh, that's uh, something that we are going, going to cover today. And we are going to finish until section 2.4. Uh, and then you will have this knowledge check that you can solve, right? But by now, I will start with, uh, the vocabulary. Okay, here. If you see, uh, can you watch my screen? Can you confirm it? Pueden ver mi nueva pantalla? Hola, hola. Hello, Hello, can you hear me?
Hello, hello. Can you watch my screen now? Hello, can you watch it now? ¿Pueden ver ahora mi pantalla? Yes, teacher. Ok, perfecto. Ok, excelente. Ok, now we are going to start with the parts of the house, right? Eh, in the parts of the house, we are going to learn the external parts, right? Eh, so, we have the roof, which is the higher part of the house. We have the windows, which are the external parts. We have the balcony, which is uh, near to the window, right? Or is part of the window sometimes. Uh, it's close to, right? This is an external part too. We have the main door. We have the letterbox. We have the path. We have the house. We have the garage. And if you have a driveway, we have it also there. And then we have other external parts like um, reach, right? which is the highest part of the roof, uh, the chimney pot, right? The satellite dish, which is like uh, where you can receive the signal of your uh, internet TV and whatever. You have the walls, you have the window, the hanging basket, the garage door, the basement, the driveway, the balcony, as I said before, the doors, the stairs, the letterbox or mailbox, and some bricks. Um, later, let's see, I have a, a small description of a house here. For example, my house is green color. It's made of brick. It has a roof, it has walls, two doors, and four windows. It has a garage for one car. It has three bedrooms, it has a small garden, and it has stairs. So, my question is, how is your house? Can someone describe your house? Hello? Hello, hello. Can you hear me? 